Welcome back to Ben's Garage. Exciting times on the Mad Dog Farm. Not only is Christmas just round the corner, and I do like Christmas. Uh, <laughs> I'm a big kid. I've even got an advent calendar, I know. Um, if you can hear over my shoulder, that is the whir of the solar inverter. Yes, we're finally hooked up. <laughs> Just ready for it to be cloudy as arseholes outside. Uh, we've had a little bit of sun today, and uh, when the sun comes out, you can hear the old inverter kick off, where the fans get louder as it's charging the batteries. Uh, at the moment, you'll see behind the door, I've got three circuits running off the solar at the minute. So we've got my oven, which has a 32 amp feed. That My oven draws 3.4 kilowatts. Here we go, look, the sun's just come out. <laughs> Let me just see how many watts that is. Seventeen hundred watts. We like that sound. That's free electric coming into the house. <laughs> it's a little bit in and out today, so you know anyway yeah I've got my oven on there which is 3.4 kilowatts now we fired the oven up yesterday and from cold the most it got up to was just over 2 kilowatts so there's that we've also put the fridge and freezer on it we like that sound the fridge and freezer inside is on solar and all the power out in the barn so that's the outside freezer the boiler, the washing machine, 1800 watts, we like that. Now our solar panels are rated at, if you combine them, 2200. Now they do say that you'll never get full power, um, but it's not getting full sun at the moment. So I'm hoping that we get around 2000 to just over 2000 watts coming into the house. That's the plan. We've only got six panels out there at the moment. So yeah, we've got the outside power, which is the boiler, the washing machine, the outside freezer, and all the outside lights. So the lights in the barn, the cow shed, and the boiler room. That's all on the solar. We've got the fridge and the freezer, and there's a little ventilation fan down in the cellar. That's on solar. And my oven. So far, the plan was that we're just going to get it hooked up with some things and see how it runs. See how much solar we can get in from outside to charge the batteries. Now to start with, yesterday, yesterday was our first day of having it all connected up with circuits on the solar. The day before I had the solar panels connected up and the batteries connected up because I managed to ground the battery case and that was all done. I've also put a ground on the surge protector for the solar panels coming into the house. There's a breaker and a surge protector, that has to be earthed. That was all earthed. So on the 30th of November, I hope you can hear me over this row. <laughs> Let me just move this camera because I'm getting a bit of reflection on the old... Uh... <clears throat> so on the 30th of November we had the solar power coming in to charge the batteries. Yesterday, when I got the circuits on, the batteries were down to 69%. But I wanted to get them charged up to 100% to start the cycle going. I wanted them fully charged to start with. So we charged them up on the grid uh, and that was pulling in just over two kilowatts to from the grid to charge the batteries and from 69 to 100 percent it took just two hours at two kilowatts so 2000 watts so hopefully if on a good sunny day our panels can generate around about 2000 watts it will fully charge our batteries in a you know depending on how much we drain them overnight and obviously at the moment last night was at 100 percent Overnight it pulled them down to 73% I believe. Um, that's with the boiler cutting in and out. I mean we switched the heating right down at about 9 o'clock at night. So it it's on a very low setting but if the house does drop below that it will kick in overnight. So there's that. Um, and the fridge and, fridge and freezer when that kicks in obviously they run idle for quite a lot of the time. Voltage coming in, status of the battery, 
That's grid power, that's the inverter power, and that's the load on the house in percent. Come down. This is the kilowatt hours we've generated by solar, which is 3.9 kilowatt hours. Batteries at 74%. This is the Hertz, so 50 Hertz for us in Europe. This is the amps, so 1.2 amps from the solar panels, 4.9 amps at the battery. And then this is the watts coming in, so you've got 280 watts at the minute and we're using 32 watts on the house. Yeah, so I'm really chuffed. You know, the sun comes out, you hear that noise, it's like, power, that's free electric. Obviously it's not free, it's cost us a little bit of money to get it all set up, but you know, it should pay for itself. So the circuits that I've got on, I have tested, I've got one of these little things which is a, a socket tester comes up your voltage and it shows your lights and the lights tell you if there's something wrong two left leds tell you that it's correct all the earthing is good i was a little bit concerned about the earth because the new distribution board obviously the old distribution board has got the earth running outside ground spike there's so many meters of copper cable coiled up in the ground to spec basically for elect uh, French electric standards or whatever so that's earthed so I've taken an earth out of that box over to this side as you saw in a previous video and um, but what you don't want to create is a ground loop so I was a bit concerned with the new distribution board not having an earth but I've taken a grid feed from that side to the inverter so you've got your AC in and then you've got your AC out which has got the earth on it as well so the earth does pass through the inverter to the new board so putting this in the sockets it says it's got a good earth so I'm quite chuffed about that now I've got an electrician coming he's going to check my work so there's you know we're all sorted on that front but um, yeah so we're just testing it now we're probably going to run it for about a month on just the three circuits possibly and then just to see what happens because I've got the Wi-Fi dongle on the uh, the inverter now that's the story in itself getting that set up the instruction obviously all this solar stuff is manufactured in China Chinese instructions are translated into English on the most part it's fairly good but the Wi-Fi dongle was a little bit tricky now I can bring it all up on the iPad because I've got it connected what you have to do if anyone's interested, if you've got a grow white inverter and you want to do it, and I'll do a special video on it, but other than that, I won't bother too much. But I'll just bring up the app, and um, it's the Shine Phone app. Hang on, let me uh, record the screen. Let's refresh the page. So today we've generated half a kilowatt of power. We've got 2,026 watts coming into the house. The arrows point down to where it's going. So we've got arrows going across to the battery. The battery's at 76% and it's charging at 1942. The house is drawing 29 watts. So the boiler's off at the moment. The fridge freezer is obviously at idle. So, you know, we're only drawing 29 watts. But we can scroll down. We can see our totals for the day our totals full stop so in since we've had the solar system running and I've had the dongle working we've generated four kilowatts of of power or you know four four kilowatt hours um, so you got your storage imported from grid so yesterday we imported 2.7 kilowatt hours now our kilowatt hours here in France on our tariff is 15 cents for one kilowatt hour so that's just over 30 pence to charge those batteries yesterday and then down here we've got this graph where I can switch off different things. So if we leave the yellow one on, that's solar production. So maximum it's gone up to is just over 2,000. So we can generate 2,000 watts. Um, if I stick on storage production, that tells me you know how much we've produced for storage. Load consumption. I'll switch the green and the uh, yellow off. 
so that's your load consumption so the most we've ever pulled out of it is 315 watts that's until lunchtime when I fire my oven up so we'll switch that one off import from grid we've not imported anything today so that's that so you come down here we've charged at um, half a kilowatt and we've discharged 8.8 .8 of a kilowatt so far today it was quite cloudy this morning so um, yeah so if we come down here a little bit of trivia for you we've reduced four kilograms of co2 <laughs> we've saved 1.6 kilograms of standard coal and we've reduced defore deforestation by one tree <laughs> hopefully those numbers will climb up <laughs> but uh, yeah so we've got all these graphs here and you can go into the information from midnight you know tells you obviously your storage production your load consumption so we won't have been generating any electric until daytime so let's come down here um, you know we've got like 1 watt, 2 watt, 3 watt, 2 watt, 3 watt, 4 watt now this isn't real time on the app um, it, it's a data logger so the Wi-Fi dongle data logs every five minutes so it shows up on here and then hopefully if I come down here we're getting at 11.35 we was generating 2026 watts so across here storage production and load consumption I mean with very little load you can see here where the, the boiler's been cutting in and out like 147, 152 you know, up here, 248, the boiler might have cut in while the fridge was fired up. And here, at 20 past 8, 312 watts. But, um, yeah, so, you, you, you know, it's just, we're up to 78% on the battery. So that is really going up quite quick. Um, so I can go onto the dashboard. That just tells me how much we've generated in a month in total. Um it's not it's, it's not a, a fantastic app but it shows you what's coming in and what what you're storing and and all that kind of thing so but that hearing that noise it's like ka-ching 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 money <laughs> uh, there's a song about that um so yeah i'm really chuffed to bits with that it it took a bit of research and it it was a bit of a head scratch at times but I think now it's up and running. Uh, we're gonna, as, as I say, we're gonna run it for about a month. It will be data logged, so we can see what we're generating, what we're using. Um, I can compare it with the EDF app, so we can compare it with like November, and then did, no do no. <laughs> we can on the EDF app we can show November what we was using last month. We can show December and see what we was pulling from EDF in December. And then obviously when we get more circuits on the side, all the only reason I'm testing it is I don't want to put too much on the batteries to start with because obviously we've only got the two batteries. They're 3.5 kilowatt hours each. So combined that's seven kilowatt hours, but you can't draw all that power. So you only can get like 3.1, 3.2 kilowatt hours out of it. So that, that'll be just over six kilowatt hours of storage usable. Um, if the solar panels are going to charge up these batteries quite quickly plus because the way I've got it set at the minute is you can have it there's so many settings on these inverters I've got it set up solar battery utility so it will use the solar to start with for any loads in the house and charging if the if it's not generating enough solar it will pull out from the battery and then if the battery gets down to a certain level it will pull out from the utility see the utility wants to be last because we don't want to be paying for it that's the idea of having a solar system then you've got your charge priority where you can have solar um, and once the solar is not enough it will charge off utility you can have it solar and utility or you can have it solar only I've yesterday I had it set so it charged off utility but we want it charging off solar full stop we don't want to be charging the batteries off utility because that's pointless that's costing you money to charge your batteries if you was in a position where you had a tariff where your electric was cheap overnight you could use the grid to charge batteries overnight 
Um, and it would be cheap, but we're not. We're a standard flat rate, it's 15 cents a kilowatt hour. So if we can generate our own electric during the day and save it in the batteries, so that's what this experiment's for. Will those six panels charge these batteries up in good time? So next, will, it, will, will we add some solar panels or will we add another battery? Because the battery's about 1,400 euros, which <laughs> sounds a lot, but they, they should last for, well, there's people, they, if you go on the depth of discharge 95%, it says it will do 6,000 cycles, which is about 15 years. Now I've put the depth of discharge down to 80%, and we'll see how they go. Because uh, I don't like draining the batteries all the way down. Whether, it's, whether you should with a lithium battery, I don't know. Um, I'm still researching that, but it's just settings that we're playing around with at the moment. So when the batteries get pulled down to 20%, which is 80% depth of discharge, the power will get re-diverted and it will draw power from the grid until your batteries have charged up. Now you can have that setting so that when your batteries get to a certain percentage, it will then change back to your battery power. So I've set that at 50%. It was set at 95, but you don't want to be charging your batteries up to 95% before you can use them. Whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't, that's how I've got it set. So when the batteries get charged back up to 50%, they'll switch back to battery power. Oh, there's a lot going on in my head at the minute. But that's what we're gonna do. Data log it on the old iPad. Um, and then if anyone's interested, I will do a monthly review on our data logged power coming in, what we've saved, what we've used. Uh, and I'll do a comparison with our EDF app that shows you what we've used previous month, the month, and then, you know, if anyone's interested, if not, we'll stick to Ben's garage stuff. But I'll just, there's been a lot of interest in these videos and people asking questions and stuff. So I thought, well, I'll just put this last one out. A beginner's solar system. Um, yeah. That noise is music to my ears. So anyway, I hope you like this video. Not too exciting. I'm not showing you a lot of stuff, but everything's all in place. Uh, I've just got to the conduits out there the cables in the conduit I've just got to dig it dig a trench and we'll lay it in the ground and then cover it all back up and that'll be done <clears throat> the frames all earth spiked up it's protected and everything uh, we've had quite a bit of wind and it's not moved <laughs> so uh, yeah hope you like this video please give a big thumbs up if you did subscribe if you haven't already and we'll catch you in the next one bye for now